My guest this week has traveled all the way from Geneva to Accra to meet with Ghana's President John Dramani Mahama, ahead of the UN General Assembly in New York this year. In this exclusive interview, I want to find out from him how the world has reached when it comes to positioning the post-2015 agenda with regards to HIV and AIDS. And also with his vast experience in global health, I also want to find out from him if the world's approach to the deadly Ebola virus is the right way to go. Michelle Sidibe, Executive Director of UNAIDS, is my guest. Mr. Michel Sidibe, welcome to my program. Thank you very much, uh, Jefferson. I clearly remember your first words in office when you were appointed as the UN AIDS boss back in January of 2009, and you specifically stated that you want to see HIV and AIDS eliminated totally from all over the world. If I ask you to give me a report card right now on your major achievements in that, what would the report contain? You know, what is very important uh, in uh, whatever position is to have a vision, mm. is uh, to be able uh, to be bold, uh, to not be scared uh, for the future, but uh, try to shape this future. And uh, for me, it was always about uh, uh, being ambitious, uh, setting uh, a, a, a priorities and making sure that uh, we have a goal which will help us uh, to uh, drive uh, energy of people. Mm -hmm. Zero new infection, zero discrimination, zero death. People were telling us what he is talking about. Mm -hmm. But uh, today what we are seeing is that we are breaking completely the trajectory of this epidemic. Every single place in the world we are seeing decline on new infection. We are seeing decline on number of death. We are seeing uh, also more and more uh, young people uh, becoming active, not just uh, passive beneficiaries of uh, our action, they are uh, becoming actors of change. So prevention programs are working, but treatment programs also are working. You have to remember, just a few years back, people were telling us that it is not possible to give a treatment to poor people that in Africa uh, we will never be able to give uh, uh, drugs uh, to people. Mm. It's uh, too expensive and uh, they will not follow the protocol. We'll have uh, a lot of resistance. And we have been able uh, to demonstrate that they were wrong, those uh, skeptics. And uh, that's important. Key, you have been able to do a lot, no two ways about that. But there are also some challenges. And one of your goals is to eliminate HIV AIDS in children. But I want to read this story for you. And this is a child in northern Gambia who says that, I am Kathy, 12 years old. I was born with HIV and AIDS. I don't know how many medicines I've taken in my life. I was adopted when I was three or two years. I don't really remember how my mom told me that I had HIV and AIDS or anything. People tell me that people like me shouldn't even be on this earth. Obviously, this is a clear example of stigmatization. Although the UN AIDS has done a lot, the issue of stigmatization really continues to be a big, big issue around the world, isn't you, it? You know, uh, what you're saying is so important because this message is showing clearly that uh, we have a forgotten uh, group of people. We have been uh, not able to reach uh, those people who are uh, left behind. And we need uh, to change completely the way we deal with uh, health. We need to move from a disease-specific approach to people-centered approach. And when we are talking about people-centered approach, is exactly that one, uh, making sure that the human rights of people are respected, mm. fighting against stigma, discrimination, making sure that it's not just about pills, this uh, child is telling us uh, that I received pill, but what I was lacking is how to restore my dignity, mm -hmm. how to make sure that I exist as a human being, mm -hmm. and how I will be uh, able uh, to have my sexuality, uh, my sexual life n becoming not a uh, uh, reason to be uh, completely uh, discriminate. So for me, that is very important message which we need to take. And it's not just about those groups. You have uh, many groups. You look at the many people today are completely uh, marginalized, excluded from our program because mm -hmm. their sexual orientation. Some mm, uh, women who are sex workers have to hide themselves. They, they, when they have uh, a condom, I can say, when they are 
having condom to protect themselves, they are arrested and considered as criminal and put in jail. So we need to fight uh, uh, stigma, discrimination, but we need also to fight bad laws. What for you would be the single most important decision that you have taken as a UN AIDS boss in trying to eliminate this disease? That challenge, that decision that you took, that you knew that it was a bold step, a decision that tomorrow, if you know more the boss of UN AIDS, you're going to be remembered for. I think for me it's to say to the people that we can really have a, a generation free of HIV. That this child should have not been born with HIV. That uh, we could really come together by 2015 by saying to the world that we have been able to stop the transmission from mother to child. Mm. But we also manage uh, to keep alive uh, the, the, those mothers. And uh, for me, that will be the best uh, success story. I want to be remembered by saying that uh, I put a vision, but uh, also I gave uh, the milestone to the world to achieve those visions. 2015, let us have 15 million people on treatment. Uh, 2020, let us achieve 1990. 2030, let us say that uh, we end AIDS. And ending AIDS doesn't mean that we will not have a case of HIV or we will not have any more AIDS cases, but we will not have AIDS as a, a public health threat. Mm -hmm. And that is important for me. It's quite amazing because I've been following <coughs> on social media and yes. it's amazing the kind of things that you tweet. You are very active on social <laughs> media and the United, uh, the UN AIDS as well is using the platform to conscientize people. You recently tweeted and I think somebody retweeted as well, that <laughs> young people will lead the way in solving today's problems. How so? Yeah, because for me, let us be realistic. Uh, uh, in the globalized world, uh, when uh, we know exactly that uh, the world is uh, highly uh, interconnected, mm -hmm. you cannot be any more non-transparent. You cannot uh, uh, think that 70% uh, or 60% of your people were uh, young people will be just a passive beneficiaries of your program. They need to be actor and they will be because uh, they are connected virtually, they are uh, talking to the, and we are seeing a, a new citizenship uh, emerging, a, a, a new uh, citizen, world citizen. Those young people are uh, just uh, uh, telling us that uh, we need to not be scared of our future. Uh, we need to shape it. And that uh, is what they are telling in when they are in the street, when they want to participate in the politics, when they want to tell us that they don't accept to not have a job, when they are pushing people to reform completely uh, their laws and uh, being more uh, proactive in terms of uh, making sure that they are actors. So that's what they are telling us. And we cannot do it without young people. I believe on that one. You, you had a meeting with President John Dramani Mahama, the Ghanaian president, yes. in your visit in Ghana. And it's quite amazing yes. the successes that Ghana has chalked. And he tells you, for example, that the prevalence rate has gone down from 12,000 mm -hmm. to 7,000. Do mm -hmm. you see this as a significant achievement for oh, the country? Oh, you know, Ghana is a good example for us in HIV because uh, the president... Uh, started a long time ago, mm. when he was already Minister of uh, Communication. communication uh, you, you remember, uh, when he's not uh, on, he's not in. It was uh, coming from him, when he was trying to make sure that people can understand that uh, using uh, a condom is uh, very important for young people, mm. changing the behavior, mm. uh, bringing a different dimension in terms of sexuality education. So. It's not just what happened in the last three years, four years. Mm. It is something which started long time. Uh, bringing different uh, constituencies, uh, I'm talking about religious group and civil society together, and uh, make sure that we have a platform which will really help us uh, to uh, break the trajectory. And that's why today we can soon probably say to uh, the world that Ghana will uh, eliminate the transmission from mother to child, that we will have a generation free. It's possible. They were having 30%. Now they have less than 7%. And what we are uh, hoping is to have uh, less than 2 3%. Do you not see some of these praises coming from all over, from governments, from civil society, some of them sounding sort of um, a cliche, really, um, in praising the UNAIDS or in praising the various institutions that work on that. But when you go on the ground and you talk to the people, some of them will tell you that, yes, a lot of education is going on 
I think over the few years I've been speaking to the mm -hmm. country director of, yes. of UNAIDS in yes. Ghana, Mr. Haile Gami, yes. and one of the key things that we keep talking about yes. is how to sustain the 2015, post-2015 agenda. Yeah. Big question, what happens to the campaign against HIV and AIDS after 2015, especially after the MDG? I think uh, the world realized that uh, uh, AIDS was not just about a disease. AIDS was an opportunity for social transformation. AIDS was an opportunity. You see AIDS as an opportunity for social transformation? transformation. And making sure that uh, you have a better redistribution of opportunity in the world. Uh, we managed to reduce the price of the medicine from $15,000 per person per year to $80. We challenged uh, the trade rules by uh, for the first time to bring trips and make sure that countries can start producing generics. We have been able uh, to break the conspiracy of silence around uh, uh, this uh, deadly disease and make sure that uh, we transform completely uh, the dynamic of uh, providing services. You go to Rwanda today, mm. you go to uh, Ethiopia, you will see that they use AIDS money uh, to just have uh, community health workers. 35,000 people have been trained in Ethiopia to just be able uh, to uh, give services to people, not just AIDS. Mm. So that's why I think it's very important uh, mm. when we talk about uh, Ebola, when we talk about all those diseases, to not uh, forget what happened. We lost a lot of time with uh, HIV AIDS. The time we had the first uh, drugs in the developed world, and the, it took us 10 years to give these drugs to uh, poor people in our continent. We'll definitely come we to, should not we, accept We will that. definitely come to the Ebola virus because it's, yes. it's what's trending right now. But with all these successes that you're talking about, you realize that Africa is the only region to have an agreed common position on the post-2015. Why so? Why are the other continents not getting committed like Africa is doing? I think it's coming because if you look at the last uh, uh, report in the General Assembly, they came together. They managed to agree that uh, ending AIDS by 2030 mm. is key. We should uh, keep that because, uh, like I said, AIDS has been a driving force. Talking about violence against women, talking about minorities like I was mentioning, we would have never been able to really bring this debate uh, like we have been able to bring it today without HIV AIDS. So they know that uh, uh, ending AIDS is about uh, producing medicine, mm. bringing the debate of public goods. So I think that is fantastic. But that happened also because Africa has been able to show that they can produce results. That they are not also just uh, uh, in the begging mode. And that is very important. It's a big shift AIDS brought. Just a few years back, we were having 90% of resources were coming from Africa. Country like South Africa today is putting two billion dollars every year to fight uh, this epidemic in their country, which was uh, inexistent a few years back. And uh, Africa increased by 150 percent of their contribution. Mm. Domestic resources is uh, bigger than uh, uh, total donors uh, uh, funding today on HIV mm. AIDS. That is the first time in the history of any disease we have been seeing that. Mr. Michel Sidibe, Executive Director of UNAIDS, I'll definitely come back to you and for us to talk about the deadly Ebola virus as an experienced person when it comes to global health. Do you think that the world's approach to this particular disease is the right way to go? And that's going to be after this break. Mr. Michel Sidibe, Executive Director of UNAIDS, is my guest. Thank you again, sir. Thank you, sir. It's quite amazing exactly what is happening in your own country, Mali. How do you feel as the UNAIDS boss when you sit in your office and you hear all those things happening in your country as a diplomat? We'll definitely come to the HIV aspect of it because it's, it's one of Africa's success story. But with all these things happening, what runs into your mind in your office in Geneva? You know, let me just tell you, uh, Mali is uh, certainly uh, a big country, a big nation, 
It is uh, a country with a uh, very old history. So I am per uh, convinced that the people will uh, found in uh, this process a learning point, which will help uh, certainly the population uh, to react. When I said that I talk about population of Mali, because I'm sure they will not accept uh, to have a country which will be split. They will uh, bring all their uh, traditional approach into this process to make sure that they bring peace. They will uh, do whatever they can to make sure that no one will be excluded. No one will feel not being part of uh, this great Mali. And I, I think it's a part of the life of um, uh, many countries. We have this breakdown. We have to uh, learn from that experience. And I'm seeing a lot of uh, opportunities and hope uh, happening in the region, sub-region. Your uh, president of Ghana is mm -hmm. contributing and, uh, through ECOWAS. Uh, and we are seeing a new process coming uh, with uh, Algeria and others. I am uh, convinced uh, that uh, we'll overcome that. Thanks Again, me. we'll overcome it because uh, it is an old uh, nation. It is uh, uh, nation uh, with uh, uh, committed people. Things may not be right politically in Mali, but when you look at the HIV AIDS statistics, is it sheer coincidence that your own country, Mali, records a 2% infection rate? And for me, this is one of Africa's success stories. Yes, it's a success story because uh, they have been able uh, uh, very early uh, to contain this uh, uh, epidemic by bringing uh, all the different um, structures mm. of uh, society. And they, uh, what they did, which was uh, very interesting, is to change completely uh, the dynamic of the approach by uh, focusing uh, on specific groups who are uh, the entry point for uh, this epidemic. What we need to do now is to be careful mm. because when you have a breakdown in the society, like in Mali, when you have a crisis, when you don't have uh, any more uh, a mechanism to really monitor and follow up uh, people who have been on treatment uh, because of all this breakdown, the risk is that uh, you will uh, lose uh, uh, certainly the potential uh, to break uh, further uh, the trajectory of this epidemic. So it is a success story, but we need to watch, we need to accompany Mali, we need to support Mali mm. in this uh, process. Mrs. Libe, if there is any issue at all, if there is any disease right now that is posing a threat to the world, it definitely would be the Ebola virus, and you're pretty much aware the countries involved. Um, Nigeria now, Sierra Leone, Liberia, mm. Grand Guinea. Do you think that the international approach mm -hmm. to this disease is the right way to go? I think what we need to do uh, is uh, first uh, to not be uh, taken uh, hostage by uh, the panic mode. Uh, it will be very dangerous if we start... Uh, panic uh, mode meaning cancelling flights? Cancelling flights, being scared, confusion. closing a bo uh, uh, border, making that. sure that... I think that is uh, certainly uh, the first reaction uh, people will have because they are scared, they don't know uh, much about uh, this uh, epidemic. But uh, I personally feel that uh, what we need uh, is a uh, harmonization of our policies, making sure that uh, the uh, political leaders uh, and their the leadership of uh, the president of Ghana, who is the president of ECOWAS, ECOWAS. we have a head of a state uh, uh, levels uh, um, uh, uh, strategy where we, uh, this, uh, this, uh, we can take a decision about uh, uh, borders, we can take decision about flights uh, and others. We have to know that it is, uh, you know, it is not an airborne uh, 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 disease, uh, disease. Yeah. so it will not be transmitted uh, like that. Uh, it is uh, a fluid, it is a uh, bodily fluid uh, uh, type of uh, uh, transmission, so we n what we need is uh, uh, huge communication, massive communication, making sure that uh, uh, people uh, are uh, really identifying clearly the areas where we have uh, uh, those uh, risks and uh, containing those risks there and making sure that we combat early and we can bring quarantine or whatever. But uh, it is uh, 
uh, I was myself involved in uh, Ebola uh, uh, in uh, northern Uganda. But uh, wow. we, yes, I went there. I put all those uh, masks, and we have been working, putting quickly, uh, quick reaction, and it has been a content. We saw Ebola coming uh, 30 years more than 30 years Way back, back in, in uh, so in, in uh, already in Congo. Mm -hmm. So uh, my uh, former uh, colleague uh, Peter Piot was the one who discovered Ebola virus. So. What is a little bit um, shocking me is that uh, we are always waiting. 35 years, this deadly disease uh, appear uh, in uh, Congo, and it, of yeah, course, and, and I was going to come to that. Why? Why has it taken the world over 30 years to find a solution to this deadly virus? I, I think I mean, what is very important uh, again is uh, Africa need uh, their own vision. They need their research base. They need to invest uh, on uh, knowledge uh, economy. You cannot uh, uh, believe that uh, when you, uh, whatever we can say, uh, research is taken hostage by the North. So we need to be able to break that. We need to be able to take a decision to make sure that uh, we attract our young people and uh, we make sure that uh, we have a research base which will address our uh, disease. How Today, how we can? How much challenge does this panic mode that you're talking about pose to the world, especially to Africa, really? No, I think it will be mainly Africa. What will, uh, if you have nine to ten months uh, in this, uh, you will have a major impact uh, on uh, the economics in the region. You will have most of the meeting will be uh, stopped. Uh, all the o hotel occupation will go down. Uh, activities in the region will uh, be reduced. Investors will be scared. So they will postpone uh, the time. And mm -hmm. 10 months uh, in, uh, you know, economic which is booming is a major problem. So it's a very important beyond the Ebola, beyond uh, the cases uh, of uh, death, to have a, a harmonization of uh, uh, approaches, policies, to look on cross-border mechanism, trying to rail. When I was coming here, I was very happy mm -hmm. to be stopped in the border mm -hmm. uh, just when I was entering in Ghana and be tested if uh, my temperature was not high. Mm -hmm. So those are the uh, small but very important contributions. Uh, contributions. And to do that, what we need is of course of global solidarity is very important. We need to work with uh, uh, partners to make sure that uh, they can transfer knowledge, they can give us uh, what is available. But uh, what is very important is to reinforce the interface between uh, service provider and community using civil society movement, making sure that uh, we use a family's uh, 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 house to house approach to really inform people in the areas uh, with high risk. And that is very, very important. And uh, policy and orders uh, concerning flight, uh, uh, closing borders mm. and orders, let us not be uh, driven by uh, panic mode because it will be a kind of a Chaotic for the yes. world. Chaotic for, uh, chaotic for our region okay. uh, and then for the rest of the activities which is going on. As we speak, the World Health Organization is coming out with a strategy to help to contain this disease or to control it. What would be your single most important contribution to the World Health, especially because African leaders are also expected to meet on this particular disease in trying to resolve this particular issue? You've led um, uh, UN AIDS for quite some time now, and I know you clearly remember when AIDS was first tested clinically in the United States, the kind of panic and scare yes, yes. that you know, it actually sparked. What would be your advice to the World Health Organization in that? You know, I think for me, WHO is um, a, one of the uh, uh, best uh, uh, normative organizations in the world. Uh, so uh, they will put all the norms which are needed uh, to make sure that uh, uh, if we follow, we can uh, be able to uh, contain and uh, even combat uh, uh, Ebola. Mm -hmm. But uh, beyond that one, what is uh, important is social mobilization, mm -hmm. is how we bring a community together, how we make sure that uh, uh, this interface uh, uh, with uh, people will be better managed and how we uh, address cross-border uh, movement mm. and uh, without uh, uh, the m panic mode. I don't believe that uh, it is the way to go. You, you managed to watch um, a movie yesterday by Shelley Frimpo Mas when I'm talking yes. about love or something like that yes. and for me 
I mean, it's one of the most unique films available right now. And I find it very surprising that this is the first officially endorsed by the United Nations yes. AIDS Commission, making the film first in Africa to be endorsed yeah. by the UN. Yes. Why has it taken so long you for know, such a thing to be endorsed? Sometimes we are, we are uh, even uh, surprised why we don't uh, uh, put enough uh, energy uh, to look for those uh, talented people. The, this movie was just uh, one of the best I saw. Uh, honestly, uh, not just talking about AIDS, but talking about uh, a relationship uh, between men and women. Mm. Uh, you know, a relationship between a couples and society, uh, the genders, uh, uh, you know, relation, a power relation in the society, a stigma, discrimination, access to medicine or not. So mm. I personally feel that uh, uh, it's taking long because uh, we don't uh, pay attention. We, we are uh, running uh, for uh, certainly looking for uh, what is the most uh, important today, but not thinking about uh, the vision which should be behind to make uh, the world better. And uh, that uh, is uh, the reason, because we could have uh, do that long time ago and it would have have a major impact on the people. I will support this uh, movie, I will endorse it, I will encourage uh, the world to be able to see this movie because it's a very uh, interesting movie. It's quite amazing the kind of discussion that you're going to have at the UN General Assembly in September. By the end of this year, close to next year, 2015, you are wrapping up things. One of the main reasons why you met Ghanaian President John Dramani Mahama what would be the most single most important thing that you'll be looking out for in September? Should world leaders meet at that General Assembly? What would you be telling them, wrapping up the MDG? You know, what I will say, please uh, uh, make sure that uh, whatever you do, inspire people. Mm. Uh, so let us be able uh, to make people uh, capable to measure what they treasure. Uh, so if you, you are not giving them a clear goals, goals they can uh, relate to, to, which can help them uh, to see that uh, uh, the ultimate goal, which is to save life, is a part of uh, uh, their agenda. They will not uh, be uh, certainly with you. So let us not miss uh, that point. Our objective in this business is to save life of people. If uh, that is not achieved, uh, so we are failing. And for me, I will uh, ask them, uh, and that's why the president will be a very important uh, voice for us, is to show that uh, if we achieve 90% uh, uh, of the people who don't know their status today, 19 million people out of the 35 million who are uh, infected don't know their status. If we manage to reach 90% of those uh, people, and uh, to make sure that they can be knowledgeable about their HIV status. And if uh, we put 90% of those people on treatment and we manage to uh, make sure that 90% of uh, them who are on treatment will not uh, have uh, any uh, 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 capacity to mm. find the virus activities in their blood, we will be able to control this epidemic. Mr. Michel Sidibe, Executive Director, UNH, thanks for your time. Thank you very much.